So our research found that uh, high intensity interval training was really effective at removing the damaged mitochondrial proteins and helping to resynthesize new ones. This has a lot of benefits for aging because mitochondrial proteins go down with age and the high intensity interval training or HIT was really effective at reversing that. The the high intensity interval training routine that we used was started with a 10 minute warm up, followed by four minutes of high intensity and then three minutes of rest. We did a total of four of those hit cycles and then we had a five minute cool down. The total workout time was 40 minutes. It's important that people take time to work up to the routine by having a warm in phase of a couple of weeks where they're doing intervals at lower intensity. And then as they progress, they can then begin to have higher intensity or more intervals throughout their workout program. So the high intensity intervals are performed at about 90% of a person's maximal capacity. For a warm-up phase, it's important to use a lower intensity of somewhere around 70% for the first couple of weeks. And then once you achieve a, a nice adaptation period, you can then go to those higher intensities of 90% or higher. Incorporating HIT into a personal workout it can be a very effective choice for trying to improve adaptations. And what we mean by that is, if someone is not achieving their goals in a time that they'd like to, perhaps look at the intensity, and if you increase the intensity using HIT, you might be able to achieve your personal goals better. Yeah. HIT training can be readily incorporated into most workout programs. It's important to have a day off in between the HIT workouts. And so having a day where you're not doing HIT, but doing something else, maybe a lower intensity exercise, or incorporating in some weightlifting would also be an effective approach. Mm -hmm.